order to pay respect to my great-grandparents, my family decided to visit the village in China from which our story originates. But everything I had heard suddenly became so much more vivid. As we walked through the village, I saw the actual locations of the horrific events that always seemed like more of an old legend than a part of my family history. But now everything was real. The second house from the meeting hall was my great-grandparents. Inside, it was damp, dark, and seemingly not far from collapsing totally. Soon we were making our way deep into a wet forest area behind the village. We stopped upon two giant mounds of dirt, my great-grandparents' graves. There were no tombstones, no names, no way of identifying who was buried there. No way for people passing by to even know they existed, let alone the struggles they faced. Those two mounds of dirt hidden in that forest in China means everything to me. All my DNA lays in those two mounds of dirt. Those two mounds of dirt that have no name, and my fear is that they would disappear very soon. But those two mounds of dirt also represent something very, very important. Oh, let's go back one, sorry. And that's this. It's about transformation. And if I could change the T on technology and TED, I would change it today for you on this very idea that Mark brought up already, and that is transformation. So this is a little bit of a story about my personal transformation and my family transformation, which brings me on the stage today to be in front of you. So that transformation took me here. This is where I was born, 1135 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. This is a laundry. Most of you don't even know what a Chinese laundry is today. Charles Wing Laundry and Dry Cleaning. So I grew up in the back. My dream back then in the transformation days, my dream was to have a living room. My dream was to have a sofa. My dream was to have a bedroom. So I grew up in this little space with no heating and no insulation. And I grew because I stepped outside and I saw wonderful things like this, objects of design such as this DeSoto, and that's how I learned how to speak English. So I would watch TV, recognize the commercial, go outside on the street corner, and identify the cars. So that's my love of cars today, is because it was through the automobile that I learned how to speak English. Recently, though, I had the great, great horror and honor of living through and seeing the beginning of a spiritual transformation. This is me evacuating my staff in Tokyo on March 11th. As I rushed everyone from the office building out into the street, as we lay down and we felt the tremor of the ground, and we found out later this was the largest earthquake in the history of Japan, the fifth largest ever registered. So this youth, this generation of youth in Japan has been vilified. It is the lazy generation. It has been the generation with no hope, with no aspirations. And suddenly, something happened that has caused a transformation, a spiritual transformation of a new generation in Japan. This is what transpired, this poor young lady who had no place to go. But suddenly, this forgotten generation that has lost its soul has suddenly found its soul. And it found its soul even in the agency that I work in. So suddenly, we were renting trucks like this and beginning to pile boxes of supplies of diapers and baby food and bandages. And rather than sitting and waiting for clients to tell us what to do, we got into trucks and started driving north with supplies. This is Kentaro, senior copywriter at our agency. Families from Sendai, this is as he arrives, he's looking for his family. He's looking for his house. And this great series of posters here, and I'm only going to show you one. On the side in Japanese, it says, please put your whole heart into your work instead of empathizing with us. 
We believe that is what will revitalize the coast and the town of Iwate. And as the kids said, as usually, they're always the smartest. Dreams win. They always win. So I cross over. So I'm watching this incredible transformation of a country, and I can't wait to go back. June 1, I go back to the office. I can't wait to put myself back into, in, into this group of people who are literally changing the future of this country. I cross over, I take the plane, and now I'm in another country. I'm in another place where there's another transformation, quite differently, that's happening. This country. Country filled with problems, but also country filled with a lot of hopes. This is my staff in China. An incredible office, unbelievable group of people that never lost any hope because that's all they have, is that they see this incredible future in front of them. This is what they built for us. This is our office. An extraordinary place with maybe some of the most brightest minds in our own entire network work in this place. And the world has noticed, of course. The world has been coming for years now. This is Karl Lagerfeld putting on his latest show in China on the Great Wall of China. Someone very important to you, you should remember this name, Ken Gokuma, because he's coming to Portland to help transform this city as well. He's coming to work on the Japanese gardens. This is a new hotel that he just built in Beijing. And this, in terms of sustainability, this country is going to rival our technology in terms of who's going to get there first with some of the innovation that we really need. And this is an example of what they're doing. This is uh, in Taijin, the eco city. This is going to be a new city that's being built all green, and it'll be housing 350,000 residents in this green city. So, start with some of the facts here. Every four months, this country is developing and building a city the size of Chicago. This wonderful woman here is one of 162 bloggers in China, 162 million bloggers, 162 million and growing people have a blog. But this brings me to the most important part, and that is the cultural transformation. And where is this cultural transformation happening? Well, of course, all over the world. But the most important one to me, the one that those two mounds of dirt inspired, is the cultural transformation that's happening right here. This is why we're here today. It's why we're in the Girding Theater. And this cultural transformation that's happening in this city, the city that we love so much, is happening because of many things, but obviously because of all of you, everyone that's here today, but partly because there are many burgeoning creative corridors in this city. We are sitting in one of the major creative corridors of this city. Now, there are many, but this is one, and this one's sitting in, in the creative corridor, and if you can see, you'll recognize all your favorite places in this creative corridor. So in the upper left, if you walk out of the Ace Hotel with your coffee, you cross the street, you're at Powell's, you keep wandering, you may be at Wyden and Kennedy, or AI, or at Zeba Design, or at PNCA, and then the amazing thing that's gonna happen very soon is the building in the middle there, the 511 building. The 511 building that will transform Broadway into the new gateway of art as you enter the city. Now, these plans are still under, you know, being developed. Brad Clofield is the architect working on this project. And the excitement around the opportunity of that corner and what it's going to do for this city in the creative corridor it is amazing. Of course, there's already great successes, the craft building and all the wonderful galleries there, new design centers, new design firms, this lower left one that just opened months ago on the park blocks. And the magic of the park blocks will be, un will be developed as the 511 building is the shining star at the end of those park blocks. Keep going through Chinatown where I'm involved, and then the middle one I'll talk a little about later, and then of course, we go to the end of the creative corridor, this creative corridor at least, over to the U of O and the uh, new College of Oriental Medicine. So, the project that I'm talking about, thinking about here as part of the creative corridor is this project. What did those two mounds of dirt really mean to me? Well, I'm trying to bring the essence of that dirt, something within that mound of dirt, to this city, to this city that we all love. And I'm trying to bring it here 
in a, in a place that represents um, my version of China, perhaps the closest that I can get to it, and that's this corner. That's the old Grove Hotel on the corner. So our partners, including uh, Alex Calderwood, who is the co-founder of the Ace Hotel, myself, my wife Janet at the Studio J, and the, um, the Goldsmith Blocks partnership, are hoping to take over this block here between, on Burnside between 4th and 5th, which is the entrance to Chinatown. So that inspiration that happened long ago in terms of those mounds of dirt in China, I'm hoping to bring that DNA right here in this city and see if we can't bring something magical here as well. So the Grove will be a hostel. This is a proposal, so wish me luck with presentations coming up. <laughs> They're getting a sneak preview. Will be a hostel, something affordable for all of the young people that are coming here because of creativity, because this is a creative hub in the world. So we have thousands of these young people coming from all over the world, but they can't find a cool place to stay that is affordable. So this will be, first and foremost, affordable and a hostel. The other thing about a hostel that's inspirational to me is the idea of a communal kitchen. The communal kitchen where you cook up you know, your food because you can't afford to go out and eat in the fancy restaurants, this communal kitchen will cook up ideas. It will have a gallery, it will be inviting and putting together uh, creative people from all over the world and mixing them with you, the people of this local community. This is the drawing of the building for a renovation, and on the, on the front of the building is this great calligraphy that says, Create. That's not the name, that's the action that we want to have behind these, these walls. On, on this, I mean, we want to transform the city block. So to create something behind all of this. So the bottom floor will be all new retail and we're going to be helping young chefs, young chefs that can't afford restaurants, uh, young artists who can't afford to be in a gallery yet. That's the purpose of the bottom floor and the top floor will be 70 rooms of international creative people coming in to visit you and visit us. So, from poetry readings to film screenings, the Grove will be a home for the new young international society right here in this backyard. But the hardware is only one part of it. The software is the most important part, and that is to engage with you to get young artists from this community mixing with the best and the brightest of the international creative community. That's part of the transformation of Burnside that we're hoping for. So, this is our transformative moment, meaning this group. It's an intersection of creativity, business opportunity, technology, our independence that we, we fight for so much, global attention, and it's happening as we are all sitting here at this conference right now. And then when you walk out the door, remember, you are in the heart of one of the most important creative corridors in the world, a creative corridor that has international implications and reach right now, and we've only scratched the surface. Imagine if this creative corridor would dare enough to reach across the river and work with other creative corridors and bring all the forces together. So, some words of caution. I know I see a lot of people out there who are in the creative business. We talk a lot, creative people. We get up on a soapbox, we challenge our clients, we bash them for not taking risks, for not spending enough money, for not daring to do this, but you ask the creative people to take a personal risk? Oh no! can't do that. I have this juicy job in China. It's, it's unbelievable. Oh no, I don't speak the language. I don't travel well. It's unbelievable. So I'm calling upon all of my peers in the creative business to really step it up and really to live by what the, the, the kind of fail harder, you know, philosophy that we all think we should be living in. The other danger here well, first of all, why, why that change? The speed of change demands reinvention in order for all of us to stay relevant. The day, you know, young kids coming out of school today, they will be going through three or four career changes in their lifetime, in their career. The idea that you have a job forever or one career forever, that's over. You are going to have to reinvent yourself throughout your career, and that's no different right now for all of us. The purpose why we, I think we're all here at this conference is to take those first steps of reinvention. And that's the first part of transformation. And what's dangerous in the water that we drink here in this fair city? This part. 
If it weren't so true, the idea that young people come to this city to retire, it'd be funny. <laughs> so where's our aspirations? And where does that aspiration go a little higher to inspiration? And rather than simply settle on creativity, let's think about imagination, which is the next thought higher. So this is very, very much a part of the, the uh, wonderful aspect of our community, but it's also the biggest threat to our ability to transform. And it's that purpose of to transform that I wanted to share with you that these, these opportunities here are going to be here for a little bit of a, a short time and then they're going to be gone and they'll be going to some other city and some other community. And technologies will come through and we have to make sure we capitalize on this very moment, this transformative moment. So how do we do this? First of all, I would like to reach out to you as I am right now. I'd love to know what your transformative dreams are for this city, and let's see if we can't get together and do something together. The biggest asset that we have in this town is collaboration. The ability and the willingness and the aptitude for collaboration is what drives this city and makes this place possible. It's why this theater is even possible. So I think the collaborative spirit is something that no other city can match, and I think that's something that we need to take advantage of right away. So if I can hear from you, if, I, if you do have transformative dreams for this city, let's see if we can't work together and let's see if we can't put some kind of a coalition together to make your dreams you know, come true as well. So I go back to my, my, my uh, two mounds of dirt. Um, that film actually was made by my son in his last year of Lincoln High School here five years ago. And he's graduating from film school in two weeks, and we're going to go back to China to finish that film, actually, to figure out all of the things that happened in that village and how did they get into that situation. So I, I end today by asking you to see the opportunities for transformative you know, power that you have in this room and for this city, and the, that moment in time of magic is right here as we speak. And I hope that we can work together on that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.